Hey, we're getting you ready for July 4th today, so make sure you stay tuned. It's Fun Day Friday. Let's go. Hey. It's Friday. Never tasted so good. We made it. Mm -hmm. You made it, everybody. That's right. It's the weekend, baby. We're getting it crunk up here on the Rec Tech deck at the Worldwide Headquarters for Rec Tech. I'm excited to be here on Friday. I'm always excited. Man, to be here you on are a little bit jacked up. I'm, I'm liking this. I'm Cheese and crackers. Bit. It's because you love America. It's Fourth of July weekend. Let's go, baby. Let's go. I know everybody's going to take off Monday. Yes. You know, yeah. we're not. We're going to be here at Rec Tech. That's that right. way, yeah. we can take off Tuesday That's to right. celebrate with everybody. Mm -hmm. So, just a reminder: uh, if you're a local yeah. to the Augusta, Georgia, or Lehigh, Utah area, we will not be open. It's Charlie, uh, the retail will not be open. We will be celebrating with our families and friends uh, our independence here in America. Definitely. That's how we do it. We say it, we say it at the end of every show. God bless the United States of America. That's right, because we love being here, man. We couldn't man. think of a better country to live in. And with that being said, Chef John, I want to thank all of our uh, brave uh, military, yeah. both active duty and our veterans. Yes, sir. Uh, our men and women in blue and green and mm -hmm. red. That's right. Uh, all of our first responders. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks. They yeah. make America the greatest. Hey, right. cheers to you. Oh, yeah, here here's cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers, cheers, cheers. All right. Mm. So, when we're talking about Fourth of July, though. Fourth of July. I say that the majority of people out there are eating... Hot dogs. Uh, I would say pork butt. Uh, briskets. I would say pork butt. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are going to be doing the pork butt. I mean, but, a lot of people, but why is that? It's just because it's so easy and they got so many other activities going on on the 4th. It's something that you can put in your grill and just let it do its thing. Okay. Come back, shred it up, put some sauce on it, you're good to go. And you're feeding the masses. Okay, feeding the masses. Feed the masses. It's also very forgiving, ladies and gentlemen. Very forgiving. This, this is a very forgiving piece of meat. Right. Very versatile. Mm -hmm. You know, you can overcook it, you can undercook it, right. and you can still divvy it up to the family. Um, and you can still eat it. You can also, you know, instead of cooking these bad boys whole, you can also cut them up. That's what I'm saying. And you can make some country style ribs yep. uh, or some pork steaks. I love pork steaks. Man. Absolutely, I yes, sir. Um, so you can do a lot of things in these. You could also butterfly these open if you wanted to. A lot of folks, yep. you know, out there really want that smoke penetration mm -hmm. and a lot of bark. That's right. So if you wanted to, ladies and gentlemen, these are going to cook the same way as if you were to butterfly them open. Just cut the meat off of the bone, essentially. Find your. Uh, let me get some gloves on. Yeah, let's and do get that. It, and get on here let's and get, get my fingers wet. It's dirty. You know what I'm saying? I like to get my fingers wet out here <laughs> on the Rec Tech deck. Um, but everybody, we're going to need you to smash the share button. That's right. Because we're giving you the tips and tricks you're going to need for this July 4th right. to make sure that you're going to have the most amazing grilling experience with your friends and family. I'll give you a countdown: three, two, one, smash it! it! Let me smash the share button for those of you on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to you, everybody on YouTube, though. Yeah, we love, we you love YouTube. You. We do. We both have YouTube channels, so please make sure you follow us. Hey. Hey. All right. Yeah. Um, so you're going to find your bone side, okay? Now, man, when I heard bone side, mm -hmm. I got really frustrated Right. as as a new person to barbecue because you're there's technically six sides to this cube, okay, exactly ladies and gentlemen? Right. Down, and there's Jody. a bone on this side, mm -hmm. and there's a bone on this side. So what side am I talking about, Jody? Ooh. We're just talking the bone end. That's right. The bone end. So you're going to see there's a bone on this side and bone on this side. This is going to be your bone end. That's it. End. End. So what you will do is, is essential. oh wow, this has kind of already done it for us, but you're just going to take your knife and score and go right along the top of that bone Yeah. and just fold this open and butterfly it open. What that's going to do, it's going to give you more surface area, Chef John. Yes, sir. So we get some more seasoning on there. Yes, sir. Uh, it's also going to give us more surface area so we can get some more smoke on there. I like that. It's okay. also going to give us a chance to get some of that undesirable stuff out of there so we don't have to pull it out yeah, later. Very, we'll very good point, up. very good point. All right, so back on up, Sherpa. Let, let the folks see uh, yeah. who the stars of the show yeah, are. Come on, <laughs> I mean, hey, they can Sherpa. only stare at this that's, so long. That's right. She's a cracker. <laughs> hey, uh, bust out your phone so we can get to some of those questions. That's Ladies right. and gentlemen, please, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. Daniel. We're gonna get to them. We're both gonna, we're gonna check out YouTube. Yeah. We're also gonna check out Facebook. Uh, so if you have any July 4th questions, now is the time to ask them. And uh, I encourage you, if you haven't turned your grill on and you plan on cooking for like, July 4th, Go ahead and turn it on today. Go ahead and turn that bad boy on yeah. right now. Uh, go ahead and just check everything out. Make yeah. sure everything's working and running good, especially if you haven't cooked in a couple of weeks or so. Yeah, for sure. Um, just go ahead and turn that bad boy on. 
And before you cook on July 4th, make sure you clean out your fire pot. Definitely. Make sure you check out your pellets to make sure you don't have a, a lot of dry, mm -hmm. uh, dry, nasty pellets in your hopper, okay? Yes. Start with some fresh, fresh for pellets. the 4th of July. It's game time. That's it. You know, it is the, the, the largest uh, grilling holiday is July 4th. That's right. Um, so you want to make sure that you are prepared, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and clean that drip tray. Right. Get all of that oil off there so that way you don't have any grease fires. Yes. You know, throw uh, clean out your fire pot, throw that ash down there at the bottom, start uh, the ash build up so That's you can right. get some seasoning, like get, get some thickness down in there. Yeah. But uh, but pork butt. Yeah. Well, you're, already ahead of, you're already ahead of the game because you guys have already got a pellet grill and you've got the premier pellet grill if you're watching because you got a rec tech. Sure, so sure. just keeping that thing maintained is really going to step it up. What are we doing? Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Perfect. All right. All right. Perfect. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of anatomy of our pork butt. Let's so do these it. can also be called pork shoulder. Yes, sir. Because it is the pork shoulder. It is not the pork rear. The pork rear is actually ham. That's right. Right. Yeah. Um, so pork shoulder, uh, aka pork butt. It could also be car called uh, the party. Party yeah. pack. Yeah. Pick a picnic. Picnic party picnic. There you go. Um, and that's just going to go a little further up. And a little further down, it's going to get a little bit more meat on that picnic, but you just cook it the same as a pork butt. That's right. Okay. I got, uh, uh, go ahead. So David question. King, he, yeah, it's a question, and you're about to do it anyhow, but David King wanted to know, he wants to know where the money muscle is. Hey, David. Well, come on over here. Butt. Get on in here. So uh, we were talking about that bone end, right? The bone end, the end that the bone is on. So you go opposite the bone end, and you're going to see the money muscle right there. Look at that bad boy. This is actually a perfect, yeah, is uh, probably a nice competition one. money muscle. Mm -hmm. You can actually see it's this whole section right here. And that is looking really, really good. A lot of striations of fat. That looks amazing. But this is going to be your money muscle. Now, when I'm pulling my pork butts, I tend to just pull this apart and put it off to the side. Oh, okay. And this is what I'm going to eat. Oh, by myself. Oh, you, sli you slide that. You don't let that for the guest have any Absolutely now. not. You okay. do not let the guest have that. That is okay. the, the chef's kiss there. <laughs> um, but again, the money muscle located right there. You can also, it's just very obvious, you know, what the money muscle looks like because no other end is going to have those striations of fat just like that. That's right. Okay. That's right. Then we're also going to have our fat cap. You can see right here located in our fat cap is going to be a piece of meat that is called the bacon. Yes. Uh, by competition cookers. Now, it is not necessarily the bacon of the pig, but is the bacon of the pork butt. Get on here, Sherpa, I want to show folks. And that's a triangular piece of meat. Now, yep. normally, it's between, you know, two pieces of fat. Okay, you can see that our butcher has taken off this top layer of fat and exposed that triangular piece of bacon there. Normally, it's cooked in between two pieces of fat. And this right here, you can see the striations of fat just in it itself, okay? And again, it is in between two pieces of fat. You guys can see how thin that is. As a competition cooker, we really try to cook, uh, purchase a pork butt to where we can't see that. That's right. And it's covered up by another layer of fat. So we can cook that in between those two pieces. And if we can actually harvest this off of that cooked pork butt, we're going to turn that into the judges. Yep. And here it is again as well. It's always that triangular shaped piece there. Again, I wish it was covered up with more fat so we can cook it and enjoy it. Um, but uh, now, so on those, Jody, are you going to score? You're not going to score that if you're trying to get that bacon off of the top. No, so you're not going to want to score it. Okay. Now, if you do have a thick fat cap and you do like those crispy uh, bits of fat, mm -hmm. that's a good reason to score it. Um, you know, uh, if you're if you're not going to eat that, you should just cut it off and not score tip. it at all. That's a good tip right there. Uh, because that's really just the purpose of scoring it. That's right. Um, it's going to render down just as fast, just as quick. That's right. Um, but uh, you're going to have those little delicious bits that you can actually enjoy. That's right. Because again, if you score it and put seasoning on there, that seasoning is going to get on that fat and you're going to want to eat it. That's I promise right. you. I promise you. Shoot you. That's Very right. Very good questions coming. Now, um, uh, again, if you look, check out the bone part. We're going to have some of our horn meat right here. Some of what's called the roast. Our tube muscles are going to be located up underneath our roast. There's some more horn meat located right here near that bone. That's going to be the dark meat of the pork butt. That's right. Um, but again, the tubules are located just up underneath this roast here. Um, and those are some great eating pieces of meat. You can see one right there. There's one right there as well. Um, but when we're uh, pulling this pork butt is when we're kind of worried about those muscles. Right. As a backyard cook, as somebody that's cooking, you know, for caterings mm -hmm. and, and weddings and uh, reunions, all that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't worry about the individual muscles. We're right. going to toss them all up. Yes. We're going to toss them all together. Um, 
so don't worry about that. That's just for competition. Don't ever think it. Right, yeah. If you guys, if we're doing backyard, and you're going to turn this into sandwiches anyhow, yeah, we're just going to shred all of this up. So the more flavor you could get in there, I would say the better. So I like to open mine up, like Jody said. We'll be demoing some of that. But, yeah, yeah don't ever think it. And then I'll show you guys how to score it. Just come in here. You know, you don't want to cut too far down, but you, you do want to get down in there a little bit, okay? And you just want to score it. Make little checkered marks, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Don't ever think it. And that way you can get that seasoning in between those score marks, and then the tops of each one of these little squares is going to get nice and crispy. Okay. All right, Dominic Panarello, Jody asked, wrap What's up, or Dom? no wrap? Um, so if oh man, if I've got to speed up my cook, that is the only reason I'm wrapping. Right. Um, if I don't have to speed up my cook, I'm not going to wrap because that's going to give me the most amount of smoke penetration as well as the most amount of bark. I love it. Um, but very very good question. Again, wrapping aka the Texas Crutch. Uh, the only reason why you wrap is to speed up that cook. Yep. Again, you, you're getting that really beautiful color on the outside. Yep. You then wrap it up in aluminum foil or butcher paper. And what that's going to do is it's going to insulate it and speed up that cook that's for you. exactly right. Help it cook through. Kind of help you uh, push through mm -hmm. that stall that a lot of folks are having. But I cook at such a higher temperature, you know, the 275, the 300, yeah. that I don't ever notice or realize that I'm having a stall in my cook. It just pushes right on through. That's 100%. What about true. you, Chef John? Do you prefer uh, the hot and fast method, you know, of like 300 and above, or are you a low and slow guy when it comes to these pork butts? I, it really, for me, it just depends on how much time I have, uh, and whatever, I'm, whatever I'm doing that day. If I don't have a lot of time, I will cook hot and fast, 300, 325. But if it's going to be a boat day and I'm going to be out on the lake all day, okay. I'll put that pork butt on early. I'll put it down to 250, and I'll just let it ride out until I get home. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. So today, and most of the time, I like to do my pork butts with the Rasa Ruski's Honey Rib Rub. Yeah. Available, Rectech.com, mm -hmm. that rub and sauce bundle. Make it's sure delicious. you check it out. It's nice and sweet. Yep. Okay, and it also uh, has a little bit of bite to it. That's right. So I like to put it in a bowl um, and then just season with my hands. Instead of having the shaker, having to shake it outside, getting uh, the wind to blow it. I like that. Now, if you were, uh, all of our seasonings work really well together. So if you sure, wanted Jeff. to add another seasoning, I like to go with the honey rib rub, and then I hit it with a little bit of that Ron Screaming Pig, yep. just to give a little bit of spice. Uh, I'm a fan of the spice, so it never hurts. You like the heat. I like the heat, baby. Yep. Now, don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to tell you the, uh, how many restaurants, barbecue restaurants that I've worked at back in the day that only season their pork butt with salt. Yeah. Because seasoning is very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, and you're not gonna, this seasoning is not gonna magically penetrate into this pork. Right. Okay? The only time that this seasoning on the outside of this pork is gonna magically season the inside is when you pull it and you mix it all together. So That's the only right. time uh, that this seasoning is gonna get in there and actually penetrate, okay? So you can just season it with salt cook your pork butt when you go to pull it then season then add sauce Drop and that's knowledge. just going to be just like cooking it um, and seasoning it like we're doing here okay don't overthink it it's a big dumb piece of meat you and the grill are a thousand times smarter uh, than this piece of meat is right here that's a hundred times right but guys keep the questions coming they are awesome also hit smash that share button because you know you know somebody who needs to learn how to make a delicious pork but we'll give you three seconds to do it three three two, two one smash it now again we've got something to give away at the end of the show we're that's also right. spinning that wheel of rec tech if you don't know we give something away every week so make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you watch us every week, too. All right, Jody. So Bob Benedict, Bob Benedict says, fat cap up or fat cap down while smoking? Yep. So every time, any time, always, I cook it fat cap down. Okay. Chef John, now um, the myth is that if you cook it fat side up, right. it's going to magically render that fat down. Yeah. And that fat is just going to penetrate into that super hard, dense yeah, meat. Yeah, gravity. Just by gravity, yeah, man. Yeah. So that's what you want. You want fat in your meat, right? Yeah. No, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Oh, that no. is not right. It does not render down <laughs> and penetrate into your meat. It's that intermuscular meat, intermuscular fat. That's exactly right. That marbling that is going to render down and then therefore kind of heat up and cook that meat and make it take, taste delicious. It is not that fat cap. I'm telling you. Um, now, traditionally, the reason why you put fat cap down was you're insulating that meat okay against that flame source you That's want right. to put the fat cap towards the heat source insulating that meat but because we're in a convection environment you can yeah. cook it fat cap up fat cap down it doesn't really matter yeah. i prefer fat cap down because you're going to get more smoke penetration on the meat side the smoke is not going to penetrate through the fat so what i like to do is cook it meat side up that way it's getting the most amount of smoke circulation 
around the meat. Therefore, I'm getting up. the most amount of smoke absorption. Yeah. And it's going most, most amount of smoke is going into my mouth. That's a great tip. You know what I'm talking about? That's a great tip. So once we get it smoked, then we pull it off the grill. How long are you going to let it rest? And are you going to put it in a cooler? Yeah. So again, um, if you don't have a lot of time and you need to push that cook through, once that pork butt looks pretty, AKA it's it's got a beautiful color to it. Yep. Uh, it's a deep red mahogany mm -hmm. brownish color. You can go ahead and wrap it um, and then push that cook through. And you said once we take it off, how long can it sit? How long do you rest it before you shred it? Oh, so just how, however long it takes for it to cool down to where I can get in there with my insulated gloves and it not hurt. Right. You know, when you pull it, right when you pull it off and you put your insulated gloves on and your nitro gloves on and you go to pull it, it's still gonna be super hot. Super you can still hot. feel it. Yeah. Okay, so it, I, I at least wait an hour. Yes. On my pork butts, uh, my briskets, anything large and in charge, I wanna wait at least an hour, yeah. uh, especially if I'm smoking it. Uh, give it. A lot of times, uh, so the, all of those moisture molecules yep. on the inside of it give it time to kind of slow down uh, and end up back into the center of the, the meat. Sure. Now, resting it is, is always, like Jody said, you always want to go for at least an hour, but it's something that you guys could do if you finish your cook finishes early. Say your pork butt finishes two hours earlier than you thought it was going to finish. It's That's a great okay, idea baby. to go ahead and put it in the uh, cooler, wrap it up in some towels, and let it sit, and it will stay hot for at least another three hours until you're ready to eat it, for sure. Great question, so keep it coming, guys. Now, I'm going to cook this pork butt. This is about a 9 to 10 pound pork butt. I'm going to cook it on that Rectech cooking mat. That mesh cooking mat available at rectech.com. Right. Things awesome. I like to to cook it, to use it uh, because I can go in there and I can pick the pork butt up by the mat. Okay, I don't have to physically go in there and handle the pork butt with my hands. Which is important. I can use the mat to transport the pork butt on and off of the grill, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it easier, much yeah. easier cleanup. I'm not For having to sure. wash my hands. For sure. You know all of that uh, stuff that takes a lot of time. Now, Jody, do you uh, suggest injecting if you're doing a backyard pork butt, injecting it with some so, kind of injection? So me, no, I don't uh, inject doing anything backyard. Um, I'm not gonna appreciate it. My kids and the family is not gonna appreciate it. Uh, normally when we inject is for competition. That's true. And that's because we only get one bite, so we wanna make sure that every bite is absolutely scrumptious. Yeah. Injecting um, is a good way, you know, keeping it moist and all of that good stuff, but you're gonna make it much, much richer by injecting, Much ladies richer. and gentlemen. And you're gonna eat a lot less. less of this mm. food if you're gonna inject it, okay? Hey, uh, Michelle! So I really like to keep the pork, uh, like a porky flavor. Yes. You know, so I'm not a big fan of injecting no. and kind of diluting that pork flavor. Yeah. Um, but yes, you can most definitely inject. Now, I, if you know, if you go to inject with like au jus or like beef base, you know, it's not really, oh, excuse me, well, not, we wouldn't do that for pork butt. Right. Um, but uh, but if you're gonna go to inject with anything besides phosphates, you know, AKA salts, um, you're not gonna really do anything. No, you're really um, not. All right, so this one's coming from Mary Bland. Mary says, uh, so maybe adding a little bit of seasoning after it's already been shredded and pulled is a good idea because it doesn't that, penetrate? That's really, what, that's really what I like to do, Mary. I don't waste a lot of seasoning on the outside. Uh, or seasoning my pork butt because I'm gonna save a lot of that seasoning and I'm gonna add it when I'm mixing it up, when right. I'm pulling it, that's, that's uh, it and taking out a lot of that fat. That's when I'm gonna add that delicious seasoning. That's when I'm gonna add that delicious barbecue sauce from rectech.com. So that's what it's all about. Yes, sir. All right. So we're still gonna spin that wheel. We're gonna be announcing some winners from last week. Yeah, you week. go ahead. You go ahead. We're not gonna spin the wheel just yet, but go ahead and announce that we, uh, winner okay. from last week. Okay, so last week, fun day, Friday. Uh, they, so we spun the wheel, it landed on a cookbook, Yep. and this lady did everything that we required her to do. What question did they ask, Chef John? What is, what's your favorite recipe in the cookbook? That, oh, very good so question. So what, what, what's your answer for that, Jerry? So mine has definitely got to be the uh, Thor's hammer, uh, that beef shank, Ooh. that low smoke, low and slow smoke beef shank. I, I love that. I love that too. That's a great one. All right, so the winner is... Cindy Delinger, Delinger, yeah, congratulations, up, Cindy? Cindy. Thank All you, you. got to do is reach out to us, hit us up on our Facebook. We'll confirm that it is you, and we will get that prize out to you ASAP. So ASAP you've already Rocky. got a couple done. I've already got a couple done. I did these at the house last night. All right, so break it down to them. What exactly is happening right now? So Jerry? right now I've got an oil separator, okay? And this oil separator is catching all of this grease and pig juice. Oh, pig juice. Um, because I want to save that. Okay, I like to save all of this juice from our pork butts. Yeah. We'll get kind of, we're gonna, we're about to get sloppy. But that's hold okay. on, hold on, big guy, I got you. So I like to save all of those juices and mix them in, yeah. you know, after I put seasoning and before I put 
the barbecue sauce uh, into my pulled pork. But look at this. The bark on this looks absolutely amazing. Ooh. Nice and dark. But see, the our aluminum foil has saved a lot of that delicious juice, yeah. okay? Yeah. And we want to keep that. Um, so before I pull this pork butt, what we'll do is, is we're going to get this juice out of here, okay? okay? And it's just falling apart, like it should. Mm. But I highly encourage you to check out Amazon or your local store and get yourself an oil separator. Yeah, handy, handy tool. But guys, smash that share button while Jetty shreds We're up his pork. We're about to show you the perfect way, Let's the only way it. to shred your pork Three, this 4th of July. One, smash, smash it. it! All right. Well, first things first, we got to prove to everybody that it's done yeah. perfectly. So we'll just give it a little shimmy and we'll pull the bone out. Oh yeah, look at that dark Ooh. meat right there. That looks beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, what I like to do is flip her over and start with our fat side. Okay? And I like to get, and be careful, but I like to go in there and carefully take off all of this nasty fat. Look at that. All of that uh, connective tissue. And then what's going to happen is those muscles are going to start separating, Chef John. Yeah. Um, and you can really t tell this if you take a pork butt that's cooked and you put it in the refrigerator and let it cool down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because all of that fat and all of those muscles really start to separate, yep. okay? So what we'll do is we'll just be careful and we'll start separating. There goes a tube. A lot of that fat from our muscles, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Because you do not want to go start mixing in. Because again, look at all of this junk that I don't want on my pork sandwich, okay? Mm -hmm. All of this connective tissue. If you mix all of that stuff in, I can't tell you how many times I've been over to Buddy's houses you know, and they've got these beautiful pork butts and they did a good job of cooking them all night long and they go to shred them and they just shred them with all the fat. And all of that, that fat cap, all that connective tissue and every bite I get, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's going to have some of that junk in it, of course. That's true. Another beautiful piece of meat just coming right off and, and, and whole, okay? We're not trying, look at that, shit, look at that boy. Looking yeah, I said good. that. That's right. Looking I said that. Good. Everybody's freaking out. Looking good. Look at that meat, y'all. But again, look at me. I'm not tearing this thing up. No. Okay, here's... um. It was cooked properly. Look, so there's, our, there's one of our money muscles. There we go. So that's what I would just set aside for myself. <laughs> I can't believe you set the money the muscle aside for yourself. The whole thing. Now look You're at so me, fun. ladies and gentlemen. See, you see how gentle I'm being right now? And I'm just checking for connective tissue and fat. Now I know this is kind of boring and I hate it for you, but I really want you guys and gals to do a good job this year for the 4th of July. Yeah. So, you know, take the time now to go ahead and separate all that stuff. You know, this is after you've had a couple of beers. Yes. Uh, a couple Gotta of libations, a couple, yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of dirty girls. Uh -huh. um, and uh, you're being real meticulous right now and everybody's kind of laughing at you. They're <laughs> like, oh, they must be a little too tipsy. What are they doing over there? But you are doing them a justice right now but look at this beautiful beautiful meat Ooh, looks good jody and again i'm not i'm not g getting crazy with it right chef john no you're just pulling We're being really gentle really pulling, pulling it apart pulling, pulling apart happy fourth of july happy everybody fourth look at that big july. old beautiful tube of meat Get jody right jace uh, jason donnelly wants to know is there a way to increase the amount of look smoke in the chamber when I'm cooking at temperatures above 225 and 250. Yeah, absolutely, brother. There's a couple of different options for you. So you can, you know, you can pick yourself up a smoke tube then yep. um, and just burn pellets in that smoke tube. The convection environment inside the grill really helps those smoke tubes burn because of that blower fan. Yep. Um, but when you go to clean your fire pot and you put your deflector shield on, before you go ahead and put your drip tray in, put a handful of pellets on top of that deflector. I love that. That's the best trick ever. Okay, those pellets are going to smolder and create a secondary source of smoke for you. Yep. Uh, and you're going to see more smoke and you're going to taste more smoke. Uh, you can also do that with wood chips and wood chunks. Uh, not so much wood chunks. I say that every you time. You say that every time. Not so much with wood chunks just because they don't smolder because they're right. just such large pieces they're of wood. They're going to catch on fire. But those chips mm -hmm. uh, really do a good job. Now, now I'm to the point, ladies and gentlemen, that we can get in there with the claw and we can kind of mix all of this stuff up, but I still don't want to do that, Chef Jim. You don't want to? No, I just want to be nice and easy. Get on oh. here, Sherpa, show these people my technique, son. This is a master technique. Master Over 20 technique. years in the kitchen and cooking industry. Look, and I'm just smashing it with my thumb. I'm not getting in here with a pair of bear claws 
and just wrecking ripping it apart and wrecking this meat, man. So th would this be the stage where we add more seasoning to this? This right here, my man, is going to be the stage that we add more seasoning. All right. Then we're going to take a little bit of our al jus, our delicious pork juice. We're going to add it back in here. Rehydrate, Rehydrate it a little bit. Rehydrate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. We'll mix it all up. It's hot out here today. Yes, sir, it is, baby. Um, we'll mix it up again, and then we'll we'll see. Do we need to hydrate it a little more? Then we'll add some barbecue sauce. Okay. Um, but this is this is it. We're not getting all crazy with it, right, ladies mm -mm, and gentlemen? Mm -mm. But look at this gigantic smoke ring. Woo! It's, most of this meat is pink. It's all pink in the middle. Looks absolutely delicious. Thank you. I wish you guys could catch some of the smells coming off of this thing. We're gonna, we're gonna put a little bit of that honey rib rub in there. Now this is a little bit more detailed episode because again, it's Fourth of July is coming Fourth up. Fourth of July. We want those folks. And you see, I put about four tablespoons in there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Chef John, what you got looking right here? I got your uh, your separator. Back it separator. up, Sharpa. The stars of the show are the two people. <laughs> the stars of the show are the two people. All right, you see how our oil has separated, ladies and gentlemen. We've got oil up at the top. We've got our delicious juice down here at the bottom, about science. a cup yeah. and a quarter. That's science. And what's going to happen is it's going to pull from the bottom. I'll go ahead I dump out the top. Beep, little bit right there. And then we'll just rehydrate our pork butt. Mm. Put about a half a cup in there, probably. That sounds beautiful. I like what you, where okay. you're at right now. Now, now you're going to mix it up. Go. Yep. And again, you're going to rehydrate this pork with that pork flavor. Mm. So it's really going to taste. Get out of here, Chef John. You're about to pour barbecue oh, sauce you know, on it. Not, you know, you, no, not I'm yet. I'm going to go a little light on it, but I'm going to get some sauce not on it. Not yet. That now, you got to be a chef, everybody. Now, chefs taste. They don't eat. They don't eat. They don't eat. We just, we're taste. just taste the whole That's time. It. The whole time. So, we're going to come in here. We're going to taste our delicious meat first. Okay? Well hydrated, son. Oh, yeah. You don't need no barbecue sauce on that. Season is good. I love it. Season is amazing. But again, very well hydrated. I like it's it. got a delicious smoke flavor it to really it. It does. I cooked this. Really and truly what we want to get across, ladies and gentlemen, is I cooked this overnight Yeah. while I was asleep Sleeping. at the house. Sleeping. I didn't do anything. I took it off of the grill. Yeah. I wrapped them. Yeah. Came to work. Yeah. I put them back on this grill and waited till they were done. Done, a.k.a. probe tender. Mm -hmm. Normally about 205 degrees on these pork butts. That's right. Normally about 205 degrees on briskets. But again... Each piece of meat's different, so you're really yeah. waiting for that probe tenderness. Yeah. Um, what you need, Sherpa Daniel? But it looks good. It looks great. Well, let's spin that wheel. Oh, no. Okay. Let's spin the wheel. John, it's you your ready? turn. ready? All right. What's the rules to spin the wheel? There's two rules to spin the wheel. First is you have to spin it with the utmost confidence in yourself, a.k.a. Hard, hard as, as hell. hell. The second rule is you have to spin it to the right. Now, we like to place it on the most expensive thing on here. So what is that? That frozen hot dog, Jody? Yeah, or frozen that $50 hot dog. Or gift card. Now, we got the RTB380X. So let's give away a grill. Count me down, Jody. Three, two, one. Spin, Spin it. it. All right, round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Guys, all you need to do is like this video, oh, share this video, and then go in the comment section and ask any question. That's all you got to do. All right, and we got to get gonna a new wheel. That? We got to get a new wheel. That was the last spin on it. That's the last that spin on it. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. RTB 380X, everybody. See, we didn't even do that. I didn't even do that. I didn't even do that. I, that was that was God's will. God's will. Amen. Was, amen. Happy 4th of That's July, happy everybody. Happy 4th of July. But make sure you check out Rectech.com, R-E-C-T-E-Q.com, right. because we've got some amazing sales and specials mm -hmm. up to 20% off. We've got our uh, 4th That's of right. July special going on right now. But what the people want, yeah. besides this is a new RTB 380X, is another grill giveaway shift job. Okay. And we're giving them that for this 4th of July. That's right. They got to check out our uh, social medias. We've got a post mm -hmm. that you're going to need to like and tag some folks in. So make sure you're following Rectech on all social medias, Facebook, right. Instagram, YouTubes, all of that good stuff. Make sure you subscribe to everything because we're giving away two grills. That's right. For 4th of July, Come technically. On. Let's go. Right? We also want to give a special shout out to our uh, compadre, Chef Greg, who's headed to New York. So if you guys happen to see him in New York, wow. give him and his family a big hug for us. Take a picture and you may win yourself something. Woo! But guys, if you ever need us, you have a question, give us a call. 706-922-0890. we got a bank of people standing by to answer all your questions. That Ross Arusky's Honey Rib Rub, man, son, knocked it out of the park. Uh, if you didn't know, we're using the Ultimate Blend, blend, Ultimate blend Pellet today right. on the RT-1250. Amazing show. If you have any questions for 4th of July, ladies and gentlemen, hit us up. 706-922-0890 from everybody here at the Worldwide Headquarters for Rectech. 
God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And we'll see you at the Rat Tag. Do, do, Man, do. this stuff came out good. Got a little smoke. We got smoke ring in there. And I'm That's telling you.